Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Discord Bot tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the built-in attributes in the Z Sharp namespace for commands, so that we can put the tags on commands such as require role, require channel, and all the other ones. And then I'll also show you how to create your own custom conditions. The reason we do this is so that we don't have tons of commands where we have code like, you know, if the user dot channel is equal to this return or not equal to this return, or if they don't have this role, if they're not, you know, this whatever permission, all these uh, things that you have all over the place for checking whether a command can be used, we can put those into attributes and just tag them on our commands so that we don't have to rewrite them every single time. It makes life a lot easier, more reusable code, rather than just having you know a mess of refactoring later if you ever need to change how any of it works. So yeah, let's get into the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Some Hobo 101 Average Morning, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Evgeny, Art Farrell, Budaroy, Emery Baldwin, if anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, it'd be greatly appreciated, and let's get to the video. So over in our code, you can see all our command functions have this command attribute, and then we also have some with uh, extra attributes we'll get into in a minute. But by putting this attribute command, and then this attribute command having a public uh, string getter, for name, what can actually happen is when compiling this code, or even just when using the code in general, the uh, D Sharp library can go and get from this class all of the functions with the command attribute and also grab the name accordingly. So what it can do is it can store a dictionary of string names to function calls so that when you do a certain function, it, um, or sorry, when you do a certain command, so you type in question mark poll, it will say, all right, in our dictionary of commands, is there one with the string poll? If there is, then do the poll command. That's why you don't actually have to have the function name the same as this. It just makes sense to have it that way. And then that's why when you go to your bot.cs, when you register, if it works, when you register your commands, calling this function and passing in the type, the assembly fun commands, right? It's not an instance, it's the actual class itself. This will then um, be able to go through here and do all the stuff I just said. As well as commands, it also stores other data. Now, I you know, could go check the source code on GitHub. I've checked some of it in the past, but not all of it, obviously. Um, so for example, they have an attribute here, require roles. And then it has an enum for you know any or only, or sorry, any or specified only or none or whatever. And it explains to you pretty well in here what they actually all mean. You know, If you open these up, you can read what they all mean. And this is obviously an easy way to say, uh, to use this command, you must be a moderator or an owner. Now, obviously that was just an example for this command. In reality, um, this is really useful because what you might have to have in the past is you'd say it like, well, if context.member.roles, and you know, you'd have to do some role checks or if they check if they're in this role or this role or this role. Technically that's what's happening anyway, under the hood somewhere inside this attribute it actually does the role checks for you. But the point is it's code you have to write a lot and you don't want to have to write a lot. And you could equally go and maybe make a static class and call a function on it to do it, but you'd still have to pass stuff in. Do doing this tag is so easy. It's just tag, enum, role names, and then it works, right? So these are really useful. There's description. And then rather than just going in here and showing you what they all do, we're not actually going to use many of them. But if we go over to my browser, I'll put this down below the documentation. You can go to D sharp plus commands next attributes. Here are all of them. Now, I don't think every single one of these is an attribute. Uh, actually, no, because role check mode's an enum. That's, uh, yeah, the enum. And I think there's another enum in here somewhere, maybe. Module lifespan, yeah. But basically, they're all pretty much attributes. All the ones with attribute are attributes. So you can read through this and decide for yourself if any of these are useful or not. Now, obviously, a lot of them are useful. Some of them, not so much. You might not use them. You might use them, you know. Um, some of them I don't really see the use of, uh, at least for my case. So obviously, like, priority, I, I don't see why you'd use this. Like, I understand you can you can override functions, but why would you do that for your commands? I don't know, and you can set the priorities. Maybe if you, I don't know, had a package, and then you had a, like, sub package that went on top, and then you want this sub one to override one of the commands in the base package? Uh, that's my only guess. Um, obviously, require guild, require NSFW, require owner. There's, there's obviously all these different ones. So it's up to you to look through this and decide what's useful for you. I'm just going to show in this video real quick, because I've already shown you the use of this. It's going to be quite a short video. I'll show you how to create your own um, check. Now, we're not going to make really a practical one, because you know you need to obviously come up with a reason to have a practical one before you use it. So we're just going to show you, well, I'm just going to show you, sorry, um, how to create a class for that, how to inherit the right thing, what function you need to do, how it needs to work, and then we can go on from there. So to create our test thing, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the root and we're going to add a new folder for these, just in case we end up making multiple. 
let's call them attributes like so I decided actually we're gonna make a practical one because there is one I wanted to make in my own uh, thing that we're gonna make for now make for this so we're gonna make a new class and we're just gonna call it this uh, this is gonna be the name of your tag and then you put the word attribute on the end so for example we want to have require categories because in discord you'll notice if I open up discord and go to the test server what we've got is we've got channels like general inside the category text channels and you can have multiple channels in a category obviously now maybe your command is only in a certain channel or maybe your command is in a certain category but as far as I'm aware someone might correct me in the comments there is no built-in attribute for checking for category so we're gonna write one to do that right there's already built-in one for checking channels but Imagine your category has dynamic channels like in our server we have the ticket system where inside the ticket category ticket channels come and go as they are made and uh, closed. We don't want we, we, we can't define in code which ticket channels are allowed because uh, you know we don't know which ones are going to be allowed they're always coming and going. So we would rather say these commands are valid in the ticket category right so that's what we're going to go we're going to make a category specific command. So in our attributes we're going to call it uh, require categories attribute like so okay now what we're going to do is we're going to make this a public class require categories attribute and it um, it overrides check base attribute now by inheriting this what actually happens is um, the other one so if we go back to our commands or the fun commands I guess you'll notice that the require roles also, it's from the check base attribute, and it has this function, execute check async. If you look over here, we have to implement execute check async. We have to override it, because this is the function it calls on all the checks to see whether they pass or fail, right? Um, so let's start filling that in now. Okay, so for this, we're going to have to make sure that this message was actually set, sent in a server. So we're going to want to say, well, if the context.guild is null, or because maybe the member might be null. How it works is uh, messages have users and members. A user is just someone who has a Discord account. A member is a person inside a server. The member variable, you'll actually see in a second. If we say context on member is equal to null. Let's just have a look at member real quick. If we go to the Discord member class, you'll notice member overrides Discord user. So it's like, it's a user that uses Discord, but it also has extra data on it for a member. A member is someone in a server. So you've got extra data on here, their display name in the server, their roles in the server, their color, I don't actually know what that means. Maybe their color is their like highest role color. You know, I don't know every little thing in here because there's too much of it, but you see the point is a member is someone in a server. So if the member is null, it means it's not correct in a server. And we're just gonna say return. Now, because this is a task and it's not an async task, uh, we just have to say task.fromResult false. So this is effectively saying return false for this task ball. Uh, it's just the syntax of doing a task like this. And then we want to say, well, let's check um, whether the names that they want. So just like in uh, channel names, if we go back to fun, a uh, role name, sorry, you put in like a params, which means an array of any length of strings at the end. We want this for our category names. So actually we need a constructor. So what we'll do is we'll say public require categories attribute takes in um, an enum that I'm going to call uh, channel check mode and we'll see why in a, mo in a moment um, and we'll just call this check mode and then also params string array uh, channel names now technically yeah we could call this uh, the category names but we'll yeah, we'll see in a minute oh no actually sorry so the channel how it works is we need to check whether the parent of the uh, so this context is the context of the command, so the command we're using. We can check the channel it was sent in, and then check the parent of that channel, right? The parent of the channel we sent in is the category. Um, so what we want to do is, first of all, over here, we want to say, we want to actually store these things. So we're just going to make a public I read only list of type string. We'll call it the channel names. Okay. And a public channel check mode. Oh, we haven't actually made it yet. Okay. So just put that there. Check mode. Uh, I don't think we actually even need to make these public, but I'm not going to bother messing with that now because that's the way I did it originally. So I don't really want to change that just now. 
So let's say check mode is equal to check mode and channel names is equal to channel names. But we'll say we have to say a new read only collection of channel names. Now this is actually just the same way they do it, right? I'm doing it the same way. Wait, uh, string. There you go. I'm doing it the same way they do it inside their uh, documentation, not inside documentation, sorry, inside their source code, the way they do it for require roles and require channels. I'm using the same logic for require this. So if you're wondering why it's like this, I'm trying to be consistent with the way they do it. Then we're going to say var contains is equal to, now this is going to be whether, it's going to be a bool, uh, let's make it explicit. This is a bool for whether or not um, this is contained in the list of channel names that were allowed. Now, obviously, as I said, these this is the categories. So we're actually going to just rename this to category names, like so. So we'll say category names dot contains. Give it a second and just put uh, import link. Okay, so we can if, if it contains the context channel that it was sent in, the parent, so the um, you know the category dot name, because we're going off names here, and then we can compare string comparer dot ignore ordinal ignore case. So this basically says uh, when comparing when checking the names uh, ignore casing, right? It just means ignore casing. Doesn't matter if it's upper or lower case, okay? And then we're going to say, well, now we want to switch on this check mode. Now, it doesn't even know it's an enum yet, so let's do that first. Let's make this enum work. So in here, I'll just make a new class, even though it's an enum. And we're going to call it the channel check mode. So we want to make this a public enum, channel check mode. And then we'll say any equals zero, non equals one. Sorry, it's meant to be a comma. And then we can say mine or parent any. Now that's because we're actually going to reuse this enum when we make uh, the normal channels. So we're going to have a required categories and required channels. For now, we're just going to do categories for this video. Um, but what this means is we want to say inside here. Um, I mean, we should probably just even make another enum for this one, which is probably a good idea. Um, so we're going to say return check mode switch. This is some fancy syntax here. So if you do now the channel check mode dot any, we want to return task dot from result contains. And we say in the case it, oh, sorry, it's not that, it's comma. Channel check mode dot non task dot from result not contains. Otherwise, uh, Task dot from result false. So what we're doing here is we're oh, comma again. I've done a semicolon, comma here, semicolon here. So we're saying if the if our category's name is inside the list of names we want, then return tr well true if we want any or false if we want none. Because you might what you can actually use is you can use the enum to say. These are the categories that you must not have, right? Because um, you might want to limit this command to be used anywhere except a certain category, or you might only want it to be used in one category. It's up to you, right? It's, uh, it's up to you. We also want to say at the top of this attribute, attribute usage targets dot method, which just means uh, that you can only use it. Sorry. So you you can put this attribute on a function, right? On a method, and then. Because this is what it's for, right? We're, we're saying this method is only for this. So it stops you putting it on like a random field for a variable, right? Or we can actually use it on a class. So class. Because you could say use it on a class and say this entire, like inside this class, it's a, um, you know, you can say this class of commands. Maybe maybe you have certain commands that can own, all those commands can only be used in a certain category. So you just use, uh, you put the tag on the class instead of the function and then allow multiple False. I mean, it actually doesn't really matter, to be honest. Maybe you want it to be true, to be honest. Allow multiple just means, you know, whether you can use it multiple times on your um, function. So that could actually make life quite easy because you might say it must be in this channel, but not this channel. Actually, wait, no, actually, it doesn't make sense to be true. Never mind. I don't think you'll ever be in a scenario where it's like that. But if you ever are, just change it to true. Um, and now we can actually test it out, right? So if we go back to this um, 
respond message. Or let's see, let's go to a different command that's easier to see the response. Here we go. Let's see, use require categories. Notice how it's take, taken off the word attribute because it's smart enough to know what it's for. So it just gives you require categories. And then you just say in here, well, I want the check mode. I want to be in any of these categories. And then let's look at our Discord bot. Um, our category is text channels, right? So if we just say text channels like that, I'm now going to go run the bot. And then I'm going to create a second category not called text channels and see if it works in one and not the other, right? Okay, let's go do that. Okay, so the bot is running, as you see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the text channels. Remember, we said requires categories text channels, okay? So we're in text channels, category, let's say um, question mark ping. And it says pong, so that works. Now let's go to this other category that's not called text channels. We'll do ping. And it doesn't respond pong. And just to prove that it does work properly, we'll create another text channel here, call it something random. It's inside the text channel, so if we do ping, it says pong because we're in the category. So that's it for this video. Obviously, I've shown you how to create your own custom attribute. You can then obviously go ahead and make your own from there. The code to this will be on my GitHub page. I'll push the code as soon as I've uploaded this video. It'll be up by, well, by the time you're watching the video, it'll be up on GitHub so you can go find it. Uh, have fun making your own attributes if you ever need to. It's quite useful. Um, most of the time, you'll just use the built-in ones, but you know you might want to make your own at some point, so that's how easy it is to basically make your own. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot. Check out all links down below. Join our website. Join our Discord server. Subscribe to the channel. Anything you want to do, just get the word out there, share the video. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next time and goodbye.